to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. He's grown old by now. 
He's lived, he's died, he's risen from the dead, ascended into heaven. He's reigning on high now. That is true. But until he comes again, we still know him as the holy infant, born of a virgin, tender and meek. We are still, even now, in the time of his patience, his long suffering, his merciful ruling <coughs> of mankind. Still in his suffering endurance that we might be saved. Christ in Mary, Christ in you, that the Christ child would be born in our purified and prepared souls, just like he was born in the Blessed Virgin. This is the very endeavor of our life. The Son is eternally begotten of the Father without a mother. He is a begotten again, though, in time, now of a mother without a father. He receives his divinity from the Father, and he receives his flesh and humanity from his mother. But he is still being born, being born in those who love him, who will become his body in the world. All of the events and works of Jesus' life in this world, they are transtemporal. They're not just historical happenings that have come and gone, things to be remembered or forgotten. They are ongoing dynamic realities that we enter into and that we experience and that continue to shape us. They are ever-present realities. Now the sacrifice of the Mass expresses this better than anything else, in which we offer to God the sacrifice of Jesus' body and blood, which is our salvation. His sacrifice on the cross is not just a simple historical event. It is a present and eternal reality, and it is always and forever accomplishing our salvation. Furthermore, all these various works of Christ, they're not separate individual works, even though they have happened independently of each other in time and space. They are all of a whole single movement of salvific work by the Savior. They are, in fact, all one. And that is why we say in our prayers so often that we are saved by Jesus' holy fasting. We are saved by his baptism. We are saved by his resurrection. Saved by his ascension. Saved by his cross. All of these works of Christ work together in one single salvific act. That being true, how are we to understand his human birth? This glorious feast we celebrate every year on this night of the eternal Son of God taking human flesh and becoming man. Is this just something he did so that he could die? How is his birth still with us now in this dynamic present moment of our lives? It's a statement of the obvious to say that every human being has been born at least once. But since our father Adam's sin, all human beings have been born in sin, in death, in corruption, and with a stain. Every human ever born of parents, and I will leave the Blessed Mother out of it just for a moment, but every human born of parents, every human born in the normal way, is stained and born into death. We can say, through experience, the way a human comes into being is broken. The old way of being conceived and born must be redone, remade, transformed. It needs to be made new. We need a restart. The old way of human beings being born has become toxic. And those toxins have passed on in the process of birth. They are inescapable. We could say the proof is in the pudding. All of us, all of us, will die. There have been through the history of mankind many new Adams, one after another, made the old way. But as promising as things began to look for some of them, Moses and David and others, 
Each one by one fell to death. The inevitable conclusion was that this old birth of our parent Adam was categorically and terminally diseased. There needed to be a new act, a new birth. Mankind needed to be born again. Well, there was one more Adam to be born. The scriptures say he is the last Adam. The scriptures also say he is only the second man. In his birth, a new humanity is born by the Spirit from above. There are only two births, the first Adam and the last Adam, the first man and the second man. All men have been born of the first Adam, but to be truly human, to be free of death, which is to be truly human, as God had intended and created us, all men must be born again in the second man, that last Adam, Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God. So you see, you are not just saved by his sacrifice on the cross. You are also saved by his birth. Jesus' human birth is the nativity of the human race. When Jesus is born of Mary, mankind is born again. The first man was born of dirt, and he returned to the dirt. The second man was born of the pure virgin, and he raised man to heaven. Our Christian baptism is not just our participation in the death and resurrection of Christ. It is also a participation in the very birth of Jesus, Son of Mary. When you enter the waters of baptism, the Spirit is poured out, and the human birth of Jesus is manifest in your life. Human birth has been redeemed because God was born a human. And this is why we do not just tell the story of the baby Jesus and move on. No, the infant God is still being born in us, still speaking to us, still wooing us with tenderness and childlike meekness. And this is why we adore the Christ child on this most holy night and why we shall continue to do so until he comes again. This is not just a sentimental story. God continues to make himself known to us and to save us in his nativity. At the end of Mass tonight, we will take Jesu the Bambino and we will place him in the creche where he will rest until Epiphany when the wise men make their way to worship him. I encourage you to find some time in the coming days to visit the crash, to pray, and to contemplate this great mystery of the Nativity of the Son of God. If we are joined to the incarnate Jesus through baptism, we are also continually being made his very body, his incarnate body in this world, as we receive his body and blood, which is the true bread that came down from heaven, not the manna in the wilderness, but his very flesh, the flesh he received from the Blessed Virgin Mary. And where did that precious flesh of God come to rest? On this night, in none other than a feed trough in the town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem, which is the house of bread. The Son of God, who is the bread of heaven, becomes in flesh and rests in a feed trough in the city which is the house of bread. There he is surrounded by beasts, and he offers his flesh to the world of beastly men. God prepared the Blessed Virgin to give birth to Jesus. In her purity of soul, she prepared a place for God to be born and come into this world. She is our mother and example. And we must prepare a place in our own soul for the Christ child to be born and to continually be made incarnate in this world through his body, the church. God has become little for us, that we might become glorious in him. This is the joy that fills the whole world. And what is our response? Adoration, exaltation, glory and worship and praise. We adore thee, O Christ, 
We adore the O infant Jesus, in whom we are born again. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Christ is born.
very good. With this much sacrifice and growth, it would be acceptable to God the Father. <coughs> We beseech thee, O Lord, that the oblation of this day's festival may be acceptable unto thee, that by thy bountiful grace we may through this holy communion be found in the likeness of him in whom our substance is united unto thee. Who that it reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, through all whole ages of whole ages. Church, 
the God of his God safe to keep her in peace under thy protection, to bring her to unity and to guide her throughout the world. Likewise, for Joseph, our Metropolitan, for John, our Bishop, and for all Orthodox believers who hold the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, thy servants and all their present, whose faith and devotion are known unto thee, for whom we offer, we who offer to thee this sacrifice of praise for themselves and those belonging to them, for the salvation of their souls, for their health and welfare, and who pay their vows to thee, the eternal, living, and true God. In communion with and in honor of this most holy night, whereon Blessed Mary, the glory of her maidenhood yet abiding, brought forth the Savior to this world, and venerating first the memory of the same glorious and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of the same our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and also of thy blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, of Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenes, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and of all thy saints, through whose prayers grant that in all things we may be guarded by the help of thy protection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We therefore pray thee, O Lord, mercifully to accept this offering of our service and that of all thy family to order our days in thy peace, to deliver us from eternal damnation, and to number us in the flock of thine elect, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Which offering we beseech thee, O God, to bless, consecrate, approve, make worthy and acceptable in every way, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy most beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Who the day before he suffered, took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God his almighty Father, giving thanks unto thee, he blessed, prayed, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, and eat ye all of this. For this is my God. this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands. Again giving thanks unto thee, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of this. For this is the cup of the of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith which shall be shed for you and for many unto the remission of sin. As oft as ye shall do these things, ye shall do them in remembrance of them. Bestowed upon us, 
a pure hose, a holy hose, a spotless hose, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation, upon which thou safe to look with a favorable and serene countenance, and to accept them as thou art graciously pleased, to accept the gift of thy just servant Abel, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which thy high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to send down thy Holy Spirit upon these offerings, that he would make this bread the precious body of thy Christ, and that which is in this cup the precious blood of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, transmuting them by the Holy Spirit. We humbly beseech thee, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of thy holy angel to thine altar on high, in the presence of thy divine majesty, that so many of us as shall partake at this altar of the most sacred body and blood of thy Son may be filled with all heavenly benediction and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Be mindful also, O Lord, of thy servants who are gone before us to the sign of faith and to rest in the sleep of peace. Life and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. To us sinners also, thy servants, confiding in the multitude of thy mercies, grant some lot in partnership of thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, <coughs> Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints into whose company we pray thee of thy mercy to admit us, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create, sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow upon us all these good things. For by him, and with him, and in him, is to thee, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory throughout all ages of the great
and all the land of God, the water that takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy of that just to get my word. But it is the same word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy of that just to get my word. But it is the same word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy of that just to get my word. But it is the same word, and my soul shall be healed. I believe, O Lord,
through the same Christ our Lord. <coughs> 